It's very clear when you stand in the backstage and when you sit in the audience that Market America is about family. All right, that's very clear. Just look at that presentation you had before. But with family comes responsibility. And each of you needs to have the courage to take responsibility for your family. And in doing so, one of the primary areas that you need to take control of is your health. And that's the area, obviously, that I specialize in, that I teach, and that has been my life work. So the question really is, and I thought some of these slides that my friend Victor and I uh, prepared for all of you, is going to emphasize what you need to do. What is the knowledge that you need to acquire in order to improve your health? All right? So in, so in all honesty, going to your doctor is really like going to an investment banker. And you're going to be asking and working with your physician, your health professional, in deciding the type of investment you need to make. I can assure you, you better not be reckless with your investment. And what you invest and how you invest when you're in your 20s and 30s will determine your pension and the quality of your life after you're 55. See, the problem in some ways is that the medical profession has done such a great job in the sense that we will keep you alive. We will not let you die, okay? The problem is the quality of that life is determined by what you do and your investment in your 20s and 30s. And by the way, it's actually never too late to, you know, to become a smart investor, all right? And the reality is that there is a growing number of individuals, the baby boomers, who are 55 and older. And by the year, what, 2030, we're going to double the number of people who are older. And these individuals are going to want to have a quality of life, all right? They're going to want to spend time with their family. They're going to want to go on hikes. They're going to want to go to the restaurants. They want to travel, all right? But what they do today is going to determine whether they're going to be able to truly realize a great potential of living in this great country, okay? So I would encourage all of you to invest in knowledge because knowledge is health. All right? And I, I can't emphasize that enough. And a point that I have made over and over again to medical students and to young doctors is that wellness is not the absence of illness. Just because you feel well, it doesn't mean you are well. The day before your heart attack, you were not well. A week before somebody tells you you have diabetes, you were not well. You need to take control over your wellness. That's not in the purview of the doctor. The doctor is primarily focused on illness. If they're great doctors, they will assist you in the wellness part of your health. But you are responsible. Do not give that up to anybody. As I told many patients, thank you. As a doctor, I am very lazy. I don't want to do anything for the patient. I want them to take care of themselves. They do not want me to have to give them medications. Every medication I give them has collateral damage. I have no choice. There is no drug that I can give you that is entirely safe. That's just a fact. So if I give you a drug, it means that I am desperate. You got it? How you live before your age 55 is going to determine the quality of your life after 55. We have every reason to expect all of you to live to 90 or 100. That's a long time. If you don't invest before 55, the quality of your life for the last 20 years of it is not going to be fun. It's going to be spending a lot of time in my office. That's not a good thing, trust me. All right. So let's go on and say, well, what do you have to invest in? You have to invest in improving each of your organ systems. You have to invest in your brain, right? 
Let's see why. Well, obviously, this is what you do before you invest in your brain. You invest in your whole body. There are certain vital things that need to be done. Sleep is as important as food and water. If you don't sleep, if you get up at 3 in the morning to invest or to speak to somebody in another continent, it's, it's in, the, in the long run, it's not going to help you. You won't be able to think clearly. It's a critical part of wellness, sleep. Exercise, balance. As people get older, I tell them to preserve and protect their body. I don't need them to be necessarily running marathons every month. You want to protect your joints. If I have a regret personally, it's I wish I had taken a little bit better care of my musculoskeletal system. I didn't have to herniate my cervical and lumbar spine and other stupid things, all right? Preserve and protect, extremely important. Obviously, weight and body fat in particular is probably the most important determinant, ultimately, of how healthy you are. If your liver is fatty because of obesity, think about an air conditioner, right? You can have the best air conditioner. If the filter is not clean, it's going to be ineffective. The liver has to be free of body fat, or the air conditioner is not going to work. And then you're going to heat up, right? Not good. Food, oh my God. Food is knowledge, food is a nutrient. It's not a drug. Think of the nutrient value of the foods you ingest, because that will determine your overall health in the long run. The single most important determinant of health is the nutrient value of the foods you ingest and absorb, right? Smoking, obviously a clear and present danger and be happy. Hang around people that make you smile. Really avoid people who are toxic, people who are negative. That's critically important, right? And that's in work and play and friends. All right, so what are you going to invest in? What a wonderful product. As Marty said, you have the best of everything. You know, this isotonic product is intended to support all of the critical bodily functions that you have. Let's start. Let's start with the brain, right? I mean, how important is focus and attention and memory and executive function? I mean, that determines ultimately what an investment if your brain can work effectively and efficiently. And we have ways of measuring the efficiency and effectiveness of brain function. And in several studies, with isotonics, with pycnogenol in particular, this incredibly interesting, incredibly safe flavonoid that I have worked with Mr. Ferrari for 20 years or more. We, I mean, it's, it's fascinating when you do the studies on ADD and cognitive function, the, the simple role of such a simple product that is, on the one hand, simple, but very complex because of the nature of, of the product itself, a natural flavonoid. Well, we think the brain is important. How about the muscles? I mean, if you can't move from one place to another, you're not going to be able to have a tremendous quality of life. And unfortunately, each of us, as we age, start to lose some muscle fibers. And with the loss of muscle fibers, we become weaker. When we become weaker, we transfer the stress from our muscles to our tendons and joints. And that's why we injure tendons and joints, because the muscles that are supporting those structures have been weakened. Something called frailty occurs when you get much older, in which you know just getting out of a chair is a challenge. Just walking on the street, just unfortunately tripping you know, on a little bit of, of an abnormality on the sidewalk, and you get a hip fracture. Not a good thing. There's plenty of data showing that pycnogenol will enhance muscle fibers and muscle strength. There's no reason not to support your muscles in this way, along with physical fitness and proper nutrition and sleep. How about your eyes? Is there, is there a sense that any of you believe is more important than eyes? I mean, obviously, hearing is important, and olfaction, smell, which a lot of people ignore, I think is important. Hearing is obviously important. But vision, vision to a diabetic, Oh my God, you know, to become blind and to become dependent is a serious problem. Hemorrhaging into your eye is a serious, serious problem. Well, the pycnogenal people have done several studies comparing the role of pycnogenal, even versus aspirin, in reducing the likelihood 
that the, the main vein going to the eye is not going to thrombose and bleed. The studies are very impressive. This is such a safe and simple product. If you have prediabetes or if you have diabetes or if you have friends who may have diabetes, what's the problem with suggesting a, a simple product such as isotonics? It makes sense. You don't want to have uh, loss of visual acuity. You don't want to become blind. There are plenty of studies. You can give them the references. That's not the problem. Your joints, I mean, your musculoskeletal system, you know, you need what is called hyaluronic acid to help lubricate your joint. You need nutrients to enhance cartilage production. You need to feed the joints what it needs in order to function the most efficiently. Most of us take better care of our cars. You know, you rotate the tires, you change the oil, you put the best gasoline in. You want to put high test in your body, right? If you had a Ferrari, would you put it, you know, some leaded gasoline in it? That was crazy. I mean, the same thing with your body. Your body is no different. I mean, I deal with men, so I've got to give them analogies that they understand. They understand about cars and air conditioners and things like that, you know. <laughs> so you explain to them, you're a Ferrari. What kind of, uh, you know, gasoline do you want to put? Do you want to put maybe twice a week some lousy gas in? No, because people say, well, you know, I'm okay five days a week, and then on the weekends I have 12 beers and three pizzas. Okay, do that to your car. See how well that runs, right? Remember, you want to stay competitive. Your skin, doesn't everybody want to look well? Probably more important than being well, right? You want to look well, right? So you need that, you know, how do you look well? You look well by actually eating well and sleeping well and exercising and being happy, right? But on top of that, it wouldn't be so bad to improve your collagen and the elasticity of your skin and the fact that you don't produce pigmentation in excess. Well, guess what? Your product does that. So what I'm trying to say to you, if you want to if you want to take responsibility for your family, if you want to take responsibility for your health, all right, you need to invest so that you don't develop a very common condition called metabolic syndrome where your blood pressure goes out, your triglycerides go up, your waist circumference go up. Measure your waist circumference. If your pants are more than 34, you have a little bit of work to do. Okay? I do not surrender to obesity in my practice. All right? There are ways of managing your weight on a long-term basis. We're not simply talking about weight loss. All of you can achieve weight loss, but very few of you can achieve weight maintenance and stabilization of your weight. You need to do your share, and the medical community and the scientific community needs to do their share. They need to learn more to advise you, all right? Menopause is not a disease. It's a state. It occurs to every single woman, just as andropause occurs to men, all right? It's a state. It's not necessarily optimum. You'd like to minimize the negativity. Nobody needs to have hot flashes, right, and to feel poorly. So the bottom line is there are things that each and every, each of you can do to reduce the aging process. You can maintain your vitality. You can be responsible to your family. You just need the knowledge to do so. You're very lucky. You, you have a company that is interested in family, is interested in your welfare and your well-being. That's why it's such a privilege for me to come here every year and make this presentation. I wish you all the best.